Model games are an excellent way to understand different positions in chess. Today we're going to see an IQP model game by Gadakamsky, uh, infamous uh, former Russian, now uh, American fucking legend, as he called himself, uh, who won a great game against uh, one of his um, big rivals uh, in the 90s, uh, Nigel Short. And uh, an IQP stands for Isolated Queen Pawn, and it can arise from a variety of openings like uh, the Karakan, the Nimsu Indian, the Rogozin, uh, the Taras defense, the semi Taras defense, the Queen's Gambit declined, and so on. So it is a very important structure, and you better learn it unless you want to play weird system your whole life. If you want to become a good chess player, understand chess on a high level, this is one of the things you have to master. So let's get going, and I think the best way to learn is by seeing games like this, uh, trying to remember the concepts, the tactical ideas, uh, the way the pieces moves, when to look forward, for, uh, look for, for breakthroughs, where to attack, and so on. And that's what we're going to see today. And I'm a little bit... Uh, I apologize for my rusty voice i hope you find it okay um, i can't help it anyway i've been having a cold for almost a week uh, kamsky is white it, the candidates is 1994 in linaris which was called the heart of chess uh, when i grew up as a chess player in the 90s linaris where well was was it where it was happening i think nowadays it's probably more like uh, st louis or groningen or something uh, no not groningen uh, if i can see anyway um and this was uh, game five and it was actually a very important game um and this is the nimso indian and c5 uh, i think at the time short played uh, the so-called hypno variation uh, but uh, after this move, there will be no hypno variation at all. Um, I also played this system a few times, and I had a memorable game against uh, um, Emmanuel Berg from Sweden. All this is well known. Now we have the isolated queen pawn position. White is having this pawn, and what we are looking at in the first part of this series will be with uh, the structure where black has uh, this pawn here. There is also with the pawn on d6 and a bishop on d7 with the fianchetto, as it's called. I, I, I'm not sure I, I pronounce it correct. Um, anyway, this is a and and this is a little bit different than normal situation because white's knight is here on e2 and it's usually on f3 where I can jump to e5 and g5. So it's a little more passively placed, but it's also more solidifying because it does cover uh, this square here and sometimes uh, when it's on f3 it says a long way from h5 but uh, here it's only two moves away so it can lead to different squares castle it's all normal bishop d6 it's a well-known trick um, black is uh, is hoping for something like uh, a3 and he'll play queen h4 attacking h2 so why prevents that with knight e4 and uh, now, uh, of course, the, the, the bishop is, 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 is hanging, and this is black's good bishop, so he doesn't want to part with it. Even though knights are rather good in these kind of structures, bishops are a little bit better, especially the good bishop, like the black squared bishop. So black keeps his bishop very natural. A3. This square is an important square, and so black, white will often play a3 at some point to avoid a knight going there, because we basically uh, a plan for white is something like this, followed by this, and attacking here, right? So uh, you don't want a knight to come in and uh, annoy you with knight b4. So a3 is normal. Bishop c2. We see the plan is taking place. Uh, this is the idea, and it's coming. Uh, Rook e8, also one of the, the known lines. Another move is queen c7 followed by rook d8, uh, which is a bit more aggressive. Um, queen d3, and uh, it's not threatening anything because uh, you can't uh, do this because black will just take and cover here. 
so it's not it's not a threat yet but it could be a threat very soon so it's 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 not nice to have something like this uh, sword of democracy luring over your head so black plays g6 it's it's a very very natural move bishop a6 um taking away the square maybe you want to exchange it b6 uh, again we see that black is is getting ready for for the fianchetto where it controls um this long diagonal that is rather important in this structure rook 81 and as i mentioned in an earlier video the one where aronian got crushed by atomayev uh, the idle setup for white is usually with the rooks on d1 and e1 one of the reasons for that one of the reasons for that is that if you put a rook on the c file it might get exchanged for a rook on c8 and in general as a general rule exchanges favors the one playing against the icq iqp uh, if exchanges favor the one who's playing against the iqp okay so remember that so in general black would like to exchange everything and win the, the pawn on d4 this one is a weak pawn and at the moment it's blockaded in the soviet style uh, just um saying okay first blockade then destroy it right uh, bishop oh maybe i know something like uh, inhibit uh, rook f1 and we see again the rooks are coming uh, to the ideal square this is where you want your rooks in this structure rook c8 and it carries with it a threat uh, like uh, this so black has to move but we also know another thing is that whenever black has played this move you want your bishop on this diagonal instead because here it's uh, it's just hitting a brick wall crashing through on d6 is really hard but f7 has somehow miraculously gotten weakened by d6 uh, even though it sounds a little strange because the rook doesn't have access to f8 and the knight has better access to d5 and also so in, in, in general white would love to play uh, to get the pawn for for instance the d4 uh, oops that was a mistake um this pawn going forward uh, and and exposing the pawn on f7 a6 uh, i'm not sure that's a very slow move and it seems like uh, short thought he had a lot of time here uh, i'm not sure he, he does maybe he should have played something like uh, this uh, this is recommended by Zasnik, but Zasnik makes rather quick notes, so don't trust it too much. Is is I've seen him work; it goes very fast. So, um, knight to e two, e two, and it looks weird. Uh, but um, in in general, um, this is is uh, White has an, an a plan in mind. He's trying to maybe get to this square because uh, there is uh, something here called a mate. And here, uh, black should definitely play a weird move, bishop h4, preventing white's next. But white is not, uh, black is not uh, ready for it, so he plays knight b8. And uh, that looks very natural. Uh, clearing uh, this, uh, oops, got a, um, this uh, line here and uh, getting ready to get the knight into d7, covering uh the weak squares here and here and maybe even here so it looks very natural to play knight p8 but there's a problem and we'll see it soon queen f3 um it, it is maybe a bit annoying to have it in the same diagonal here but it works to white's advantage in some variation and uh the queen is eyeing this uh square here rook c7 and here comes the main point of white's idea and um that is and and here white had to calculate a lot because this is not easy this is not easy at all um knight is five great move and this was the reason i showed the game because i thought it was a, such a nice attacking idea the first thing we have to see is 
you can't take it, of course. Uh, then there's queen g3, so we're going to just gonna show you queen d3, queen d3, and it's all over, uh, which is, is easily to sort of uh, verify. So, but what about something like um, f5? That looks natural. Also, there is uh, this problem here. And here comes the really elegant point. Then uh, you still can't take here because of queen g7, queen d3 check. Uh, why does uh, black has weakened his uh, structure? Horrible. But what about this move? Then comes check and here and checkmate. Isn't that nice? A sort of uh, and and it's it's the kind of variations you see them and and then you somehow don't believe them. Uh, but but sometimes they happen. But of course he saw that. Ninety seven. That was probably the idea. And uh, but there's still the, the it doesn't change anything. And white does have uh, a great attacking move h4. And I, I really really liked the way um, Kamsky conducted this attack. Uh, he was a very strong player who had a very crazy fa father who was well, he, he was violent <laughs> um, and he was I think he he gave her. Uh, Kamsky second a black eye uh, <laughs> at some point, so he's more or less crazy. So here it's it's very difficult to find a good defense. Uh, should probably take and um, and and give up some material or something. He played this move and uh, and this looks like all very natural. Knight comes in here was hanging, so it's nice to get rid of it. And knight here, and now comes. Uh, White's real strong idea, d5. Notice this. This is something when you are black, you have to look forward at all times. d5 is a, a very, very unpleasant breakthrough. And we also see now that there is a really unpleasant x ray effect here. So, what happens after d5? Yeah, if you take, I take, you take, I take, you take, I give check, and here we see the real, oops, we have to take back, and here we see the real point of it all, and white and black is mated on G7. Isn't that marvelous? And that's some serious calculation by by White. So playing this move d5, it, it's not easy. And I'm not sure that White could actually calculate it all. I, th I think this line he saw, and he he, he definitely probably saw something like uh, this um, here, here, and being here. This I think he saw as well. And it's just mating. So, but uh, and and he probably probably also also saw that he, here he saw this and and saying okay uh, I'm threatening here and I'm threatening here and this must be winning and of course it's winning. So, uh, but I don't think he calculated further than this. Uh, this is also not necessary. And of course, um, yeah, uh, it, it is winning. So f5, take, take, and resign. Uh, black is simply totally lost. Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing, nothing to, to, to say here. Uh, you can't really get uh, move. Uh, uh, if you take, uh, well, the, the pin on the queen is, is also the, the X-ray effect is gone. But if you let Y take on d8, uh, he will play e7 check afterwards, and, and that will be made in two moves or something. So this was Kamsky's great game against Nigel Short, and Nigel did seem to play a rather uh, normal good moves, and suddenly he was just blasted off the board. Uh, and this is what can happen. So, so you have to realize that your position when you're defending in this, we're going to see the next game in this series, we're going to see Black defend rather well against uh, the isolated queen pawn. It's not like it's a winning structure for White, uh, not at all, uh, but it is uh, rather dangerous. Uh, but you have to realize that it is a critical position very, very soon, uh, that you are in serious danger of becoming much worse, or coming under a very serious attack if you're not very careful early on. 
and, and are looking at your setup, trying to find some counterplay, looking at White's attacking plan, and so on. I hope you like this uh, video on the isolated queen pawn positions. Uh, we will continue this series, and if you have any comments, I will be happy to answer them uh, on the YouTube channel or in the Facebook group. I remember, by the way, uh, thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.